Greetings, this is Charles Darwin. This beer has been brewed with apricots. Humans love the flavors of fruits in many kinds of food and beverage. And that's also true of many species of mammals that enjoy eating fruits. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. This fruit, do you know what this is? It looks like a big, sticky, green mulberry because it is a big, sticky, green mulberry. It isn't a true mulberry of the genus Morris, but it is in the mulberry family, genus Maclura. This is the Osage orange, otherwise known as hedge apple, otherwise known as horse apple, and otherwise known as bodark. Now this is a very interesting fruit. Actually, it's lots of little fruits that have been crammed together, as is true of the entire mulberry family. And there's an interesting evolutionary story in this fruit, especially, as in all fruits, and that is co-evolution. The species have evolved in response to one another, that they have evolved with one another, complementing one another. And in the case of soft fruits, that's especially true, because the soft fruits have seeds in them, and what happens is mammals, usually mammals, birds also, although no bird would eat something this large, will eat the fruit, and if they do not chew up the seeds, the seeds will pass through their digestive tract and then come out the other end. And when they come out the other end, the seeds have been carried to a distant location and have been deposited with a starter culture of fertilizer. It's a really good deal for the fruit. It's a really good deal for the tree to get its seeds spread to a distant location. It's also good for the mammal because the mammal gets to benefit from the nutrition provided by the soft part of the fruit. Now this much is fairly well known, you probably already knew that, but the story of this one is particularly interesting because there are now, in North America, where this species lives, there are no native mammals that eat this fruit and disperse the seeds. Oh, it's true, squirrels will tear these fruits open and eat the seeds, but that does not accomplish the dispersal that benefits the tree. The tree needs to have the seeds alive, not dead, when they come out the other end of the mammal. Now, I am also told by many people here in Oklahoma that horses will eat these fruits. But horses are not a native species of mammal. There were native horses here in North America until the end of the last ice age, then they became extinct. So it's quite possible that horses back during the ice ages ate these fruits, as well as perhaps mammoths, mastodons, who knows what other kinds of large mammals. There were many species of large mammals in North America at the end of the last ice age. They all became extinct, or most of them. And so today, what is happening is the Osage orange produces these big fruits, and then they just fall on the ground, and nothing disperses the seeds. And that's perhaps why the range of this species, the native range anyway, has been decreasing. Of course, they've been planted in many places of North America, but the native range is now mostly in the Red River Valley area, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, and eventually these fruits may, as according to one author, eventually become extinct when the last one rolls into the Gulf of Mexico. And so that shows us that coevolution is very important for the survival as well as the evolutionary origin of many species because this fruit originated because of its coevolution with a large mammal that ate it and now that that large mammal or set of mammals have become extinct this fruit may eventually or the tree that produces the fruit may eventually become extinct as well it will take a while for 12,000 years this tree has been producing fruits and nothing eating it it's sort of like doing a waltz with no partner. This is why some authors have called this an example of the ghost of evolution, the ghost of co-evolution between two partners, one of which is extinct. And that shows you that evolution is necessary for understanding ecology, because if you don't know the evolutionary origin of this fruit, you cannot understand its ecological function today. You have to understand that the trees that produce these fruits were doing so in response to mammals that are now extinct. What an interesting evolutionary story, and I hope you enjoyed it. This is Charles Darwin. Tally-ho, and amen. I'm told that these fruits are very sticky. I wonder what they taste like. Ah, 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 ah.
Ha 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 